another video of know your CRM 2016 or in this particular video we're gonna finish up the whole process of sales so if you're gonna talk about sales you know why exactly are we selling sales is actually the sale of you know what you what you have uh, maybe a product or service so and the key part of your sale will be of course your product or service so it's it's gonna be a very good uh, or reasonable to actually talk about the product itself as in what you want to sell and and that is and that will actually bring us to what we call product catalog in Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So product catalog is where you actually talk more about the product you you have for sale and also how much it costs. So it's more like a, a, a repository or the, the center of where you can configure your product and everything that has to do with the product. So to get to product catalog, where you're going to set up your product, you can get there from, from settings. You go to settings and then from settings you see what is called the product catalog. So I've already opened that here. You can see settings product catalog so from settings product catalog you have four main links so to say you have the families and product you have discount list price list and the unit groups so talking about setting up your product this is what you I mean this is where you actually need to plan to do it I mean to take more time in your in planning how your product catalog is going to look like uh, and it will pay you uh, a great deal if you take more time to actually plan how your product is going to be structured before you, you start to actually go through the sales uh, process. Now, one thing that is actually very important when it comes to the product catalog is the price list and the unit groups. These two must be set before you start to make use of the, uh, the product catalog itself. Discount list is not a must, but it's nice to, nice to actually have. And then you talk about the families and the product, and that is where you actually talk more about the product itself. So now, if you click on families and product, it will take you to the list of product and families, which is which you can also get to from the sales um, work area. So we, let's go back to the, to our settings. So before we do anything, we have to set up our price list. So we go to the price list and currently the active price list on this particular hog is CRM service USA and office 365. Of course, this is a demo data. So this is what you have in there. You can create your price list. So, uh, and you can also, you have to also take note of the currency. A price list will be associated to a currency. And Microsoft Dynamics has been designed to have, uh, to be multi-currency, which means you can have several currencies. On this and of course you're gonna have the exchange rate being displayed there uh, for the currency you know the exchange rate to the base currency so um, for the sake of time and we go because the, in this video we want to try to cover the sales process so they, I'm not gonna take I'm not gonna spend more time on having to create a new price so let's go back to our product catalog now we're going to talk about the unit groups. Now unit groups is the unit at which products are grouped. Now this can list. This is where you actually specify. Um, we don't have any discount, any active one, but for the sake of this lesson, let's just try and create a uh, sample. So this can can be as a percentage or amount. So but let's go for a percentage. And you go to the related and click on the discount and add the discount as a new discount so let's say the person you can say if the person buys something from uh, 50 to 100 then the person can have five percent this is how you specify that and you say well because what that means is if anybody buys a, the particular product they're gonna assign this discount to and the coin happens to be at least 50 the person will qualify to get 5% of a discount now that we are done with the price list the unit groups and the discount let's go to the families and the products so which if I click on it like I said earlier it's gonna take you to all products and families which is still the same as but coming from sales so now we have list of product and uh, 
well, basically product here. So there's something when it comes to like the product in Microsoft Dynamics, it's, it can be grouped as a family, a bundle, and you can also, also see it in a form of a hierarchy. So, and so just to quickly explain the icon that you see here, the icon here is the hierarchy. So if I click on it, it's going to show me the hierarchical structure of the product, how they are related. And you see the one here, which is the same thing here, is actually the product family. So which means uh, you have products that are actually related to each other. Order. And then you can have this as to be more like a bundle. So which means if I'm selling, say, a, a, a particular phone, for instance, let's say I'm selling a, a particular mobile phone, I may as well sell all the things with, along with it. Maybe a uh, warranty or a phone case. So that will make a bundle. So if I let's try one hierarchy and see how it looks like. So this is how the hierarchy works in Microsoft Dynamics. Now, the one we clicked on is actually the one highlighted. So this is the product itself. If I click on this, it's going to open the product itself, as in the, 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 the it's going to open the record of the product, and we can see the product. And taking it from here, maybe looking at this product, we can see that it actually is in a family hierarchy. And also has product properties. Now, these properties are more like inherited from the family hierarchy. So, once you have a product that is actually that has a family hierarchy or family, there, of course, and if the, the family has a product properties, it's going to inherit that from the, from the, from the uh, parent, as in from the family. And this is where you have properties, and this is more like a, a good thing or an extra that is being added to, my, uh, to the product uh, entity feature for or let me see the product catalog for Microsoft Dynamics where you can actually specify extra uh, properties or fields for your records so this is more like enabling and enhanced or extra fields on the fly so we let's go back to our um, to hierarchy so now this arrow means that we have another record to the to the left and it's more like you can scroll uh, to back to the right and you can go down if I go back, it can go down, which means this serves as a family or a parent to another, um, you can see, so another set of product. So this is how it works, and you can see it actually has a good visual display. So let's go back to our product. So if you click on any of this product, we're going to quickly discuss the possible things that you can do on a product. Now for a product, you can publish a product. Currently this product is actually in draft, which means we can't even associate or this product, uh, particular product cannot be used for a transactional uh, uh, record. Transactional record like, will of course be something like opportunity, you can't use it for opportunity or even to create uh, code orders. So we need to actually publish this. Another thing is to clone. So we can clone and just, you know, create a copy of this and set up other properties, which is going to make it easier to, cre uh, to create uh, replica products. We can delete, we can view hierarchy, which we did earlier. We can email a link of this record and we can run workflow just like what, what you can do with other uh, record types. Back to opportunities. Now from opportunity, we can go ahead to create a code. Now it doesn't mean that code, I mean it doesn't mean that there must be opportunity before you can create code. You can create code right from um, I mean on the fly. So uh, to create code, you go to still this from the sales uh, work area, you can see the code. So which means I can go ahead and just create code without having to associate the code to, to an opportunity. So taking creating code from opportunity, so let's open one of the opportunity. Whether you scroll down or you make it of the tab navigation or the form navigation here, you click on code. That takes you to the code tab and you can add you click on the plus to create 
the code or a code base. Now, an operation can have more than one code. But for this uh, scenario, we're just going to go for just one. So now, what's going to happen is it's going to get all the information from the opportunity. So that's the difference from like having to create a code uh, from the fly. If you create the code without having to create it from the opportunity, all you have to do is more like to put in all the information manually. But because I'm creating this from an opportunity, get all the information from the opportunity itself. So which means I may have less of work to do on this code. You can activate this code. Currently, this code is actually dropped. Once we activate the code, it locks the code down, meaning uh, you will not be able to change anything on the code. And at that point, of course, you are meant to, you know, the idea is like you can print it or send it over to the you know, customer. Let's see if we can actually activate this code, even though we've actually specified some other things. Good, good. Yeah, we've done the activation. I can see that it's now read only. So at this point, Another thing we can do would be to create the order, which is more like, yeah, the customer is uh, ready with the code, and then we go ahead and create the order. Now, if the customer is not happy with the code, we can revise. So revise, we mean it's going to uh, take, it's going to close this um, particular code, and then create a copy, which is going to be in draft. So, um, and then we can also uh, close this code maybe the customer is not actually interested at all we can close the code so let's assume we are okay with this so we go ahead and create the order now when you're creating your order you, you can you know of course that means that the another status of um, a, a code can be either lost or won when it's been closed now because we are creating an order so it's logical to to assume that the code is being closed as one so that's why you see that as one so let's just go ahead and you know uh, if you want to specify the actual revenue uh, you can just go ahead and click ok and it's going to create it, it's going to close uh, that code and as one and then create an order so we have an order so with this order is active you can create invoice of or fulfill order, you can cancel order, you can recalculate, or you can do lookup address or use currency pricing. Now, use currency pricing might be um, uh, one thing is if you look at the price prices, is you see that's been locked. So what that means is at, at this point, if the price of the product of the actual product uh, of this particular order changes. So what that means is because the price is locked, it's not going to ref reflect or sync the new uh, uh, product prices to this particular order. So this is more like you are locking down the prices. But if I use use current pricing, it's going to change the prices, and then you have it to be uh, to be no as in price locked to be no, which means it's going to get the the latest um, price of the product. Of for this particular order, so we let's go ahead and just create it. Uh, uh, you know, now for I forgot to mention for the fulfill order, you can be partial or you fulfill, um, fulf do a, a, a full fulfillment of the order. Now, we uh, an invoice has been created from the order, and at this point, you can do the same as a lookup address. You can invoice, you can set the invoice has been paid. So currently the status of the invoice is active. You can, you can cancel the invoice, you can recalculate. You can do the same thing as whether the price is locked or not. And that pretty much wraps up the whole uh, sales process, more like in a summary. Uh, so, but it is not a must to actually go through the whole cycle, like, you know, from having to uh, create code or, you know, it, it, uh, from code, creating an order and then from order and invoice. It depends on whatever applies to the business you're trying to model. But this is the generic uh, pro sales process that is available on Microsoft Dynamics. Thank you very much for your time and please stay tuned for another video. And please subscribe to this channel. Bye-bye.